Prime Minister Imran Khan, thank you very much indeed for joining us today. We speak a month after the collapse of the Afghan government and the takeover of the Taliban. How would you describe the situation in Afghanistan today? Uh, I think um, it's, uh, it's worrying. Afghanistan is uh, on a historic crossroads. One, if it goes well, and we pray that it, 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 this works in the direction of peace after 40 years in Afghanistan, if this uh, uh, Taliban hold all of Afghanistan, and um, uh, if they can sort of now work towards an inclusive government, get all the factions together, Afghanistan could have peace after 40 years. But if it goes wrong, and which is what we are really worried about, <clears throat> it could go to chaos, the biggest humanitarian crisis, a huge refugee problem, unstable Afghanistan, and the reason why the U.S. came in was to fight uh, terrorism or, or international terrorist. So unstable Afghanistan, refugee crisis, and the possibility of, again, uh, terrorism from Afghanistan soil. This interim government is not an inclusive government. Uh, the concerns of so many around the world are for the future of Afghanistan and its people under a Taliban government which is notorious for its misogyny and its violence against women. There is no evidence to date of any interest in providing basic human rights, particularly for women and children. How concerned are you about that? Where Afghanistan goes from here, I'm afraid none of us can predict. We can hope and pray <coughs> that there's peace after 40 years, that the Taliban, what they, are, what they have said, that they want an inclusive government, they want women, women rights in their own context, they want human rights, uh, they've given amnesty. So, so far what they have said, clearly they want inter international acceptability. But there's another fallacy. Afghanistan cannot be controlled by outside. They have a history. No puppet government in Afghanistan is supported by the people. It, it gets discredited amongst the people. So rather than sitting here and thinking that we can sort of uh, control them, we should incentivize them. Because Afghanistan, this current government, clearly feels that without international aid and help, they will not be able to uh, uh, stop this crisis. So we should incentivize them, if push it, them in the right if direction. If it seeks legitimacy, it will need to show evidence that it shares the values of those that it is seeking legitimacy for, and that being the West, for example. I grew up watching you as a star of... Pakistan's cricket team. The Taliban have said that women shouldn't play cricket. In fact, they've said women shouldn't be involved in sport at all. This is the sort of Taliban that we are seeing today. Do you support that? I mean, w women have been protesting about more inclusivity, about their rights. We know women, first-hand experience, women are too frightened to come out of their homes. They're too frightened to go to the workplace if they're allowed at all. Do you support their calls? I feel very strongly that it's a mistake to think that someone from outside will give Afghan women rights. Afghan women are strong. Give them time, they will get their rights. Should women have access to the same roles in public and in private life? Of course, women, women should have the ability in a society to fulfill their potential in life. The society, so you won't be able to support a Taliban government that doesn't allow that? Is that what no, you're telling me? No, no. What I'm saying is that you cannot impose women's rights from abroad. That's just the beginning of uh, my interview with... I want to come back to your very real concerns about the risks to Pakistan's national security in a moment. But bear with me. You have criticized the U.S. pullout from Afghanistan, uh, Afghanistan, describing America as having messed it up in Afghanistan. 
Is that something that you have told the US president personally? Have the two of you spoken since the collapse? No, I have, I have spoken to, uh, then he was Senator Joe Biden, way back in 2008. You <clears throat> haven't spoken to the President of the United States since the collapse of the country to the Taliban, correct? No, I haven't. He hasn't called you since coming into office, correct? He's a busy man. Pakistan is a major non-NATO ally and yet no call between you and the US president. Do you see this as punishment for supporting the Taliban while they were killing US troops? Ah, you, but you have to ask him uh, why he, he's too busy to call. But let me just say one thing. I heard this, uh, the Senate hearing going on, which uh, uh, Secretary Blinken was asked all these questions. I want to say this, and I hope that the American politicians would would listen to this. You know, Pakistan is the country. Just because we sided with the US, we became an ally of the US after 9-11 in the war in Afghanistan. The suffering this country went through. What, at one point, there were 50 militant groups attacking our government. And in the 80s, Pakistan joined the US against the Soviets we trained the Mujahideen to do jihad in Afghanistan. Amongst them was Al-Qaeda, where Taliban were part of, of the Mujahideen groups. We trained them that foreign, foreign occupation, fighting against them, is a sacred duty. It's jihad, it's a holy war. Fast forward to 9-11, US needs us in Afghanistan. George Bush asked Pakistan to help. And he famously said, we will not abandon Pakistan again. Pakistan joined the, uh, uh, the, the U.S. war in Afghanistan. Was I the Prime Minister? I would never have done that. Firstly, the same Mujahideen, now we are telling them because U.S. has in invaded Afghanistan, now it's terrorism. They turn against us. Then all the tribal belt of Pashtuns on our side of the border, the Pashtun nationalism kicked in. So they, they had all sympathies with the Taliban, not because of religious ideology, because of Pashtun ethnicity. So you must understand what happened. No, I really want people to know. They turned against the Pakistan army, army as collaborators. So the jihadis turned against us, the Pashtuns turned against us, and the more we tried the military operations in civilian areas, the more uh, collateral damage, the more, so we had 50 militant groups attacking us. And, and on top of it, no, on top of it, they must also know, there were 480 drone attacks by the US in, in Pakistan. Only time a country has been attacked by its ally. The fact is Washington, it seems, just can't trust Pakistan. There are call, calls by lawmakers to reassess the relationship with Islamabad now, to reassess its status as a major non-NATO ally. This was the exchange during the US Secretary of State's congressional testimony on Afghanistan on Monday. We used to always uh, hear diplomatically that we have a complicated relationship with Afghanistan, I mean with Pakistan. Uh, I would say it's often duplicitous. I think you're, you're very right uh, to point at the role that Pakistan has played throughout the, uh, the past 20 years and, uh, and even before. And uh, it is one that, that has involved hedging its bets constantly uh, about the future of Afghanistan. It's one that's involved harboring uh, members of the, the Taliban, including the, uh, the Haqqanis. Is that true? And what's your response? They are ignorant. I, I was listening to them. I have never heard such ignorance. They are absolutely clueless, number one, about what happened in Afghanistan. They were all in a state of shock. The state of Pakistan were, was under attack for being an ally of the US. Let, let me we let were me, now supposed to take on also the Afghan Taliban. Let me, I, I was asking you for your response to Blinken's words specifically. He said Pakistan's role has involved hedging its bets constantly about the future of Afghanistan. 
It's one that involved harbouring members of the Taliban, including the Haqqanis. Over the past 20, sir, uh, 20 years, sir, the Haqqani network has been responsible for some of the deadliest terror attacks in Afghanistan's history. It has killed hundreds of Western troops and thousands, let me finish, of, of, of Afghan of Afghan uh, people. In 2011, you will be aware that General Mike Mullen said the Haqqani network acted as, quote, a veritable arm of Pakistan's intelligence. This is a group that now has four members in key roles in the Taliban government. Is it any wonder that there is a trust deficit between the West and Pakistan? It is complete ignorance the Americans did not understand what the Haqqani network was. What was ha it? Haqqani is a tribe. It's a, it's a Pashtun tribe living in Afghanistan. The Haqqani tribe lives in Afghanistan. In 40 years ago, when the Afghan Jihad took place, we had 5 million Afghan refugees in Pakistan. Amongst them were a few of the Haqqanis. And the Haqqanis were Mujahideen were fighting the Soviets. They were born in a Pakistan refugee camp. So what they were asking us was that in these refugee camps, three million people living in the refugee camps, we were supposed to check which one of them was uh, Taliban and which not. That doesn't deny the fact that no, no, the Pakistan no, no, no. Intelligence you, Agency no, has no, been please. funding and supporting Becky, the Taliban through Becky, the Haqqani Becky funding. Network. You know the total budget of, of Pakistan? It's $50 billion for 220 million people. $50 billion. Americans were spending $300 million a day. They spent $2 trillion. Was Pakistan, did we have the capacity to fund another war? We can barely me meet our own expenses. You have admitted that Pakistan's intelligence agency has close ties to the Akali network. You have said in the past that you're not sure why the US hasn't leveraged those connections to get uh, the, the Taliban effectively to the negotiating table. You've always supported dialogue with the Taliban. How much do you, sir, support their ideology? And what is your red line? The strict interpretation of Sharia law as we are seeing it acted out in in Afghanistan today uh, Becky let's take two different things you've said Pakistan's ties with the Afghan Taliban Pakistan's intelligence agencies intelligence agencies job is to have uh, uh, connections with everyone they speak to everyone the US uh, CIA would be speaking to Taliban you know, they have to, it's, that's the job of intelligence agencies. Question is, was Pakistan in a position to take military action against the Afghan Taliban when it was already being attacked from inside, from diff the Pakistani Taliban were attacking the state of Pakistan? Let me just clarify about the Haqqani. Haqqani's, Haqqani tribe is in Afghanistan. It's a tribe there. It, some of the Haqqani leadership wasn't one was born in a Pakistani refugee camp, so and they go uh, back and forth Mullah, across the border. There was, uh, there is no border. There was never any border. But Becky, have we got any choice right now? Now tell me, if you do not back this government and and do not help the people of Afghanistan right now, it's not a question of people of Afghanistan, uh, uh, Taliban. It's people of Afghanistan. If we, the world international community, does not help them, what choice have we got? How would you qualify the US-Pakistan relationship today? And what sort of relationship do you want to see with the US? Uh, unfortunately, you know, our relationship during this whole, uh, the US occupation of Afghanistan uh, was a terrible relationship. It was, the US said we are paying Pakistan, you know, and they paid us $9 billion for civilian aid and 11 billion for military aid uh, and they said we're paying you and and so we are we were like a hired gun in pakistan people i'm not talking about the leadership because i think we were let down by our leadership the people felt that here by joining the u.s we had the bombs going on everywhere uh, benazir bhutto was killed because of that um, uh, uh, 
Our economy tanked. I mean, we had 150 billion dollars plus we lost to the economy. What I would like a relationship with the U.S. is now, like, like the U.S. has a relationship with India. You know, not one dimensional relationship where they're paying us to fight. We want a, a normal relationship. I promised to ask you about the risks to Pakistan's national security if the situation in Afghanistan doesn't improve. So explain what you believe those risks are and just how concerned you are at present. The biggest concern are refugees. The biggest concern are refugees. We already have three million refugees in Pakistan. Uh, we cannot, a country cannot afford more refugees. We have come out of a very difficult economic situation. We cannot ex take more refugees. The second worry is terrorism. We had three sets of terrorism, uh, terrorists in Afghanistan using the soil to attack us, ISIS, Afghan, uh, Pakistani Taliban, and the Baloch terrorists. So if there, if there is chaos in Afghanistan, if there's not stability there, then we have these two major problems looming in front of us. We are the country that is going to suffer the most.